Welcome to Applied Calculus. Calculus is the study of change built on functions. So to begin with, we're going to do a quick review of functions and what we know about functions from our pre-calc days to set up some exciting calculus concepts in this course. First, we're going to talk about just functions in general. And we'll start with a definition of a function. A, a function takes an input and produces an output. For example, we might have some inputs in a table here that are going to generate some outputs. So for example, if I put the number 3 into the function, it might give me an output of 4. Maybe I put the number of negative 2 into the function, it gives me an output of 7. Maybe I put 0 into the function, it's going to give me an output of 9. Different numbers may or may not have different outputs. But what's important about a function is if I put the 3 in to the function again, it's already been in there once. The output will always be exactly the same. So it should also be a 4 exactly the same as it was before. Now, a lot of the times in mathematics, we don't use the terms inputs and outputs. We use x to represent the inputs and y to represent the outputs. So if I put another example here where we've got x for our inputs and y for our outputs, Maybe I've got 2 as an input to another function, and 4 was the output. 3 is the input to the function, and 5 was the output. 2 is the input, and 6 is the output. Negative 3 is the input, 7 is the output. But did you notice what happened in this one? 2 was used as an input twice, but we got different numbers. It did not produce the same output. That means this relationship is not a function because an input did not produce an, a single output. In fact, let's adjust our definition and add the word single to really emphasize that each input has one possible output. This idea can stretch over to graphs as well. Let's take a look at it. With graphs, we're going to be interested in this thing called the vertical line test, which means on the graph, a vertical line, which represents any x value or any input, crosses the graph once. And that once is the y value or the one output. For example, if I had a graph that maybe wiggled around like this, you'll notice anywhere I put a vertical line on this graph, it's only going to cross the graph once, no matter where I put that vertical line only crosses the graph once. We would say, yes, this graph is a function because it passes that vertical line test. For any x value, there is only one possible output, one spot where the line crosses it. But if I contrast that with this graph that wiggles around back and away, notice what happens now when I draw a vertical line through this graph, it's going to cross the graph multiple times. That is not allowed. This is not a function because a vertical line is going to cross the graph too many times. Every input can only produce a single output. One more thing to note as we're introducing this concept of functions is a little bit of notation. If the function passes the requirement of the function that any input produces a single output, the notation we'll use is this f with a parentheses and then x. The way we read that 
is we'll say that's f of x. And the piece is there that f, it doesn't mean f times x. That f is actually the name of the function to help us keep track of what function we're talking about. And what's in the parentheses, those are the inputs of the function. That's our brief introduction to functions. In our next video, we're going to take a look at how we can evaluate functions at various points.